Hi guys and welcome back to another Fast Film Fridays. In this video we're going to have a look at developing colour film at home and go through how easy the process is because it's really not as hard as some places online make it seem. Why do I process colour film at home? It's less about the cost and it's more to do with the time it takes to send film off and get it back so quite often I'll develop colour film if I'm in a bit of a rush or I just want to see the results myself. And then in next week's video what we're going to have a look at is scanning the film uh, but we'll leave that all for next week. This video is going to focus just on the developing and we're going to go through all the gear and how I do it. Now today what we're going to do is going to process these two films and a good thing about colour processing is these two films are actually different ISOs so the Kodak Gold is 200 and we're also doing a creative film which is 400 ISO. So that's one of the good things about colour processing, it doesn't matter what ISO the film is, you can do more than one at once. The only thing that matters is if you extend the developing time in colour processing, what you're actually doing is pushing the film. So as long as you've pushed or pulled all of your films the same, it doesn't really matter what your ISO is, you develop them all at the same time, which is really handy compared to black and white processing. And first off what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at all the kit that I use to do this. Cool, so let's go through everything that I use. So first up, we've got a thermometer. So in here is just a normal thermometer, a bit like you would have used at school. A pair of scissors, a little funnel for getting the chemicals back into the bottles. Sometimes you might need a bottle opener. Um, today we're not gonna need a bottle opener, but I'll explain why later. This is my developing tank that we'll have a look at in more detail. I have two of these graduated like flasks that measure up to 600 mil. We've got my dark change bag, we've got the three chemicals, I'll link in the description below the kit that I'm using, although I'm going to start using a slightly different kit soon. Um, you can see the bottles are squeezed and that's because when you store chemicals, if you squeeze the bottle so there's no air in it, they do last a bit longer. So these are the three chemicals that we're going to be using. I've got some rubber gloves because them chemicals are nasty and we've got a measuring jug. And you're also going to need access to running water, so that's why I'm using a sink. Um, you can't see it because I've not got it down yet, but I also use a big tub that I use as my water bath. So first up is loading our film into the development tank. So for this you're going to need scissors and maybe the bottle opener. If you rewound your film all the way back into the canister, you might need to use the bottle opener to open the canister whilst it's inside of the changing bag. So then, this is what the developing tank looks like, so it's got a lid, a funnel, and then inside there is two reels and this is where the film goes so the film gets loaded onto these reels out of the canisters and the way that works is you have to slide the film onto the roll like this and then you use like a ratchet motion to load the film onto the roll and it will reel all the way in now what we're actually going to do is we're going to quickly hop to the end of the video so you can see what that looks like so here's the film loaded onto the reels that was inside the development tank now one of the ways to make it a little bit easier to put the film onto one of the reels is to actually cut off the leading edge and then to chop off the corners. This gives you a bit of a chisel edge and it makes it a lot easier whilst in the bag to put this onto the reel. The next step then is to load everything into the bag. So you need all parts of the tank, you need the two reels, the two bits of film, the centre column, the bottle opener if you needed it, I don't really need it for this, the scissors and then you close the bottom of the bag and it's got two closes so it's close of a zip and with a bit of velcro and then you stick your arms into the sleeves and you get to work so what I'm doing inside this bag is loading both those two rolls of film onto them reels and then putting the reels back into the tub and putting the lid on the top now this sometimes takes quite a long time um, this is actually at 20 times speed when you finished you pull your arms out and you'll see inside you have the development tank with everything all inside and the lid on top. So if you do do home developing, that stage is actually one of the more stressful parts. Getting the film onto their reels can sometimes be a real pain in the arse. So my advice is just to like take it slow, don't get stressed, and make sure when you sit down and first start doing it that you're comfortable. Because so if you're there a little while, you don't want to start getting cramped. So just make sure you're comfy when you start and you'll be fine, honestly. So if everything loaded and ready to go, we're ready to start developing. Now I like to wear gloves because these chemicals are really quite horrible. And the first thing for us to do is to fill up a big tub with lots of hot water. Now the temperature for all of the chemicals in this is 39 degrees. So what I like to do is fill this bath with water that's quite a bit too hot and then let the water drop down to that temperature. Make sure you give the bottles a bit of a wiggle and a bit of a shake. And if your temperature starts to drop, just keep topping up the bath with extra hot water. Now I've taken out the stabiliser because for me the stabiliser needs to be at room temperature, it's only the developer and the blicks that matter in terms of temps. 
So for everything at 39 degrees and another jug of water also prepared at 39 degrees, we're going to get going. So the first thing to do is the pre-wash. So the pre-wash is for one minute with 39 degree water and there is no inversions. You put the tank back into the bath because that also helps to keep the current process at 39 degrees. At the end of our one minute we pour away that water. And next up is the developer. So my tank takes 600 mil, so pour out 600 mil into a beaker, reset the timer and get started. So for the developer, it's three and a half minutes at 39 degrees and we do four inversions every 30 seconds. Now these 30 seconds creep up on you quickly, so make sure you pay attention. Make sure you keep checking the temperature of the water. If it starts to get a little bit cold, just chuck in a little bit more warm water. Whilst I'm waiting, I quite often wash all of my apparatus, just in case I use things later on. And we'll wait for our three and a half minutes, doing our four inversions every 30 seconds. At the end of our three and a half minutes, I pour the developer back into one of the 600 mil containers. And we start with our Blix. So our Blix is for quite a lot longer, six and a half minutes, 39 degrees, and again, four inversions every 30 seconds. Remembering to float the developing tank in the water whilst we're doing this. And again, I wash the apparatus and I also put the developer back into the developer bottle. So now I'll we'll wait for six and a half minutes. At the end of six and a half minutes, I pour the Blix back into another one of these 600 mil containers. And we start our wash. So with the wash, you're supposed to do it under a warm tap. I don't have a mixer tap, so I can't really do this. So instead, I use jugs of water from the bath because we know it's the right temperature. And I constantly invert this tub. Now the actual instructions say for three minutes, but as I don't have running water, I do it for five. And the last step is the stabilizer. So the stabilizer is only for a minute. You only invert for the first 10 seconds. And this is one of the nicer ones. The temperature only needs to be room temperature. That is actually the end of the developing. Now time for the big reveal. So at this point, your film is fully developed so you're able to expose it to light. And you're gonna take them off of the reels. My reels untwist so that you can take the film off. And then I hang the film using one of the pattern clips and a peg on the bottom. This helps keep the film nice and straight whilst it dries and makes it easier to scan later. I also have these squeegee grip things that just get off the initial load of water. So I just run them down the film once and this is what they look like. So guys, that's how I do it. That is how I develop my color film at home. It's nice and easy and it just takes a little while. So that all in took me about half hour, 40 minutes and I did two rolls of film. If you wanna see the next stage, which is gonna be scanning that film in, I'm actually gonna use my camera. I'm gonna show you how you can scan film without a scanner. So we're gonna do that in the next Fast Film Fridays that'll be next Friday. So if you wanna see that, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. And we're just getting started. So guys, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.